call the meeting to order. And this is the Finance Committee meeting, and today is the 29th. So call it to order. And today, I thought, you know, one of the, we have the new warrant, but we'll be going over, uh, you know, getting everybody else up to speed. It's going to take some time, I think, yep. you know. Yep. And so we'll have maybe some extra meetings, and it's good reminders for us. Right? You know, the basics again. Yeah. Okay. All right. Linda's going to be joining us. Oh, fabulous. Oh, we'll need a chair. Okay. Oh, unless we want to switch. Agenda, so I'll you, take, can you pass one more down? Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you That's had right. one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Didn't mean to the agenda or anything like that. So, well, um, Amy, you tell me how no. fast you want me to go with this stuff. Oh, no, jump right in. All right. Um, what we have here mm -hmm. on both sides, and the yellow one with the yellow highlight should be the first. Page. This is a cherry sheet. Uh, this is a statement of. Um, I have one. Of those. Okay. <laughs> well, if you turn your, your that over, there you go. Clever. All right. This is it's always the new guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a cherry sheet. It's called a cherry sheet because in the back of the old days it used to be printed on red paper. Um, it is a statement of uh, state aid to the town of Hadley. Uh, so the governor came out with his budget, and based upon that budget proposal, the Department of Revenue has put together a statement of our, of our state aid at this point in time. Um, and it's worth spending a little bit of time with this because it's easy to misread um, this, uh, this cherry sheet and get a wrong picture of what's happening with your, with your state revenues. So the first part, the one with the yellow highlight, this is a statement of your receipts. It starts out with Chapter 70. When you see Chapter 70, you always think education. So that's the, the state's money to us to help support the schools. <coughs> Charter tuition reimbursement at $100,000, that's money that we get back for lost revenue going, uh, kids going from Hopkins into the Chinese uh, language charter school, Pioneer Valley Performing Arts, or some other charter school. So that's $100,000. That number should really, really be much higher. They chronically underfund this account. All right, and you'll see that later when we get into the charges, the, how much they are shortchanging us here. The first number, $705,000 in yellow. This is school choice receiving tuition. This is money that goes directly to the school committee and does not uh, come to the general fund. So this is important because most people look at the bottom line on the cherry sheet and say, yay, we're getting... Uh, $2,890,000, you have to back out to 705. Okay. All right. The next month uh, number is general, uh, unrestricted general government aid. I call it UGA. It used to be called lottery, if you go back and look at history. This is supposed to be real lottery, lottery revenue, and in fact it's not. But just half a million dollars for there. Veterans benefits, this is a 75% reimbursement for our eligible costs for providing veterans benefits. How much of a percent? 75% of the eligible. Exemptions for vet veterans, blind and elderly, uh, $16,000. That's 
tax breaks to, uh, to help uh, people on limited incomes. And then state-owned land, okay, so this is the range, this is the University of Massachusetts. This is the value of the land only, no buildings. So that's, uh, that's an important number here. And then finally, public libraries, $8,000 and change, that's another offset that goes directly to the library for them to spend without further appropriation from town meeting. So those are your revenues. The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. So we turn it over and these are the assessments. <laughs> All right, so we have some small ones there, pollution districts. It's one-sided. Is there another assessment? There should be on. I bet you it's the, uh, what's the blue? Because you have blue. Yeah. Oh, okay. You yeah. had the original. Oh, I had like, the original. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. So, uh, air pollution district, uh, uh, what is that, 1900 <coughs> bucks. Uh, RMV non renewal surcharge, that's a uh, registry of motor vehicle charge to the town. Regional Transit, $216,000. I'm sorry, I know we don't want to go into great detail, but you, could you just explain what those two were for? They're uh -huh. supposed to be for traffic mitigation and okay. traffic congestion mitigation. Okay. Right. And the Air Pollution District is? Same thing. Mitigate our? Air pollution, yeah. All right, thank you. Regional Transit, this is PVTA assessment, so $216,000. That is offset by a payment from the, from the five colleges mm -hmm. of about $170,000. So Out of that $216,000, $170,000, the is, colleges pay? Five, five colleges pays us to offset that cost. Huh? Whoever put that deal together, which was before my time, I would like to shake their hand because most towns in the Commonwealth don't get that offset. Right. So, it doesn't sting quite so much. Right. All right, school choice sending tuition. This is our assessment for kids that we send elsewhere. 326000 <coughs> And charter school sending tuition, this is for our kids that go to charter. And keep in mind, we got reimbursed on the other page of $100,000, but the assessment really is 600000 and change. <coughs> so you come to a bottom line. So, and school choice would be like more like they go to the VOC? No, pay. that's a separate separate uh, uh, assessment altogether. Oh. And that's built into the school budget. Okay. All right. So this, the first one, the school choice would be somebody going wants their Amherst, kid to go to Northampton or Amherst, Amherst. Frontier, okay. uh, South Hadley, whatever. Um, so you've got to take this number, back out the offsets, take this number and, and deducted from the revenue and you, that's <coughs> all you revenue from this uh, cherry sheet. Mm -hmm. The increase from one year to the next is a generous $105,000. Okay. I typically see increases in the twenty to $50,000 range. Last year the increase was in the $200,000 range. And I think a lot of that's driven by the new education reform overhaul. Okay. Um, so I think we're, we're seeing the windfall from that. Um, it also is an election year. Uh, and there's usually more money on the table uh, in election years. So I'm hoping that these numbers will get better as we get uh, farther down the budgetary calendar. Mm -hmm. Now, these numbers are going to drive us a little crazy because there are about six more iterations of these numbers that are going to come out. This is the governor's number. It will be the House Ways and Means number, then the House number, 
then the Senate Ways and Means number, then the Senate number, and then the Conference Committee, and then finally the uh, final chair sheet based upon the governor's uh, vetoes. So we're going to see cherry sheets sort of coming in with diff different numbers from now until, say, mid to late July. Um, we're probably going to see one cherry sheet before town meeting, which will be the House Ways and Means budget proposal. And that's probably the one that we're going to use to balance the budget going into town meeting. Um, so I apologize in advance that there's going to be a lot of moving pieces to this, but it's just the way it goes on. We can see a swing of $100,000 in these numbers, so I'm always sweating bullets when it comes to this information. But not bad, $105,000 to start, that's not a bad, bad place for us to be. Next Wednesday is the deadline for the budgets and the warrant articles. And I will be presenting my, my budget on February 19th. And I've talked to the department heads and they know that they want, that you want to meet with them. Mm -hmm. And you may want to set up a uh, schedule so that they can start planning. Yeah, I would like to do that. Okay. Yeah, is that something you think it would be we should probably do today? Uh, let's okay. let's dig into it and see if we can do that. Yeah. Do you want to do that now or jump to that right now? Yeah, All right. I got my calendar, so we will need to do set up meetings with. And I guess when you talk to them, if like one one group wants to. Um, switch it or something because so, mm -hmm. we'll need <clears throat> the series 100 which is what government general government <clears throat> okay and then well the 200 is safety right 200 is uh, mm -hmm. public safety and this is how we were thinking of meeting with them right like in groups like this yeah all right 300 is education 400 is public works, 500 is um, All the human others. services, <laughs> okay. 600 is culture and education, and culture and recreation rather, so that will be library and park. Oh, okay. 700 is debt. 800 is state assessments, which we just went through. All right. <laughs> and 900 is, uh, we call it formally unclassified, but it's, think of it as benefits, retirement, health insurance, etc. So 700, 800, and 900, um, you may want to build that into one. The, the 100 levels. Budgets. Oh, we'll go up, do that together with the 100? Well, Linda, is we gonna, have. Linda and okay. O'Connor are going to be in charge of a lot of that information. Yeah. And wouldn't it 500 and 600 be due together too? You can put them together because the 500 is going to be um, having media, 600 is going to be pub, uh, library and park and rec. So Where does Council on Aging go? 500 or 600? Uh, 500. Yeah. Okay. So I guess uh, what day? What what? Maybe we can set up what day first. Let's start with what day works for best for everybody. You know. What about Wednesdays like today? Well, the only issue is is we couldn't do it. Uh, there's a lot of um, select board meetings. Oh. On Wednesdays they do Wednesdays. We're talking evening. Evening. Yeah. Mhm. Mm Tuesday and Thursday work. Me. Yeah, Tuesday. I'm good with Tuesdays and Thursdays. Yeah, me too. Generally speaking. Yeah, David. T Tuesdays yeah. might be better than Thursdays for me and Val because I think the Russell School Committee meetings and Dylan are on 
Well, it, this one's on Thursday. I don't know. Yeah, tomorrow we have one on Thursday. I don't know when Alan's planning the rest. I know he sent out a list, but I don't know if they're solidified. So I want to shoot for two, Tuesday's work for you, yeah. David? Yep. Linda? Um, yeah, uh, first and third Tuesdays are planning board, mm -hmm. so they're in the meeting room. Okay. Right. So, so first and third. Okay, so why don't we do the second and fourth? So the 10th and 24th of February? Or, no, the, the 11th and 18th? 11th and 25th? 11th and 25th. 11th. Um, that's before you present it to the... Yeah, but take it, you want to get it going? Take it okay. On this. Okay. Right. And we would do 6.30? Yeah, is that, is that going to work, David? Do you think those... What was the second? Uh, 25th? Yeah. Do we want to say... The 11th and the 25th. Let's try for, for a little while just to look at and, and like have a, a thing that we could try looking at every other starting on the 11th. Or, or maybe each month just do the second and the fourth until town meeting or until... For just a, a few of them. Eleventh and twenty-fifth. The March fifth. would be the tenth and twenty-fourth. Mm -hmm. Okay, so March. And then we're talking about April fourteenth would be the last one. I'm sorry. On March, what are we doing? Uh, which dates? Uh, the 10th and 24th. Works, 24th works, okay. Okay. You might have a conflict on the 10th with the 24th. Okay. I'm sorry, had you gone into April? I was... Oh, uh, April the 14th. And... Um, I have a, the 28th, but that's getting very late in the game. At that yeah, time. I, w I won't be here on the 28th. Okay, so. I'm going to be going from the 23rd of April through the 10th of May. Okay, this, so we're stuck. Um, we only have March 31st is okay because Plenty Board only meets first and third okay. Tuesdays. They do, don't meet do the an extra one that month. Yeah. yeah. So there, you could do it on extra yeah, one. Yeah, okay. Thirty first. Sure. So right now we need to set up at least two, three, four, five, six. You know, maybe we're looking at maybe five to six meetings. You think we and could combine? One, two, three, four, yeah. five. Yeah, you can combine. So can I recommend? Yeah. Can I recommend the following schedule? Okay. Uh, February 11th, we uh, dig into the warrant as best we can. Mm -hmm. uh, February 25th would be general government 100 plus the dead. 789. Yeah, 789. March 10th, do the public safety 200 level, because that will be police, fire, ambulance, discount, uh, dispatch, um, and, and building inspections. So that's, that's right. five major departments. Uh, March 24th would be public of works. So that will be sewer, water, general highway, snow and ice, street lights, cemeteries, building maintenance. Uh, the 24th? 24th. And then the 31st do with the 500, 600 in education. <coughs> the 31st? 31st. Giving you a cushion of the 14th and the 28th of April. We miss the schools. Things up. School on the 31st. Schools on the 31st. Yeah, so there's the not schools. a lot to their budget because it's so formula driven. Okay, 
300, 500, and 600 that night. Yeah. Oh, great. 5, 6. Okay. Well, on the 31st. 31st. And so what other dates are you telling me that are, are back up? April. Um, for, uh, 14th and April 28th. And April. It's probably due warrants and 28th. any final adjustments. And if we really get in a bind, there's probably other days we could do. Yeah, yeah. maybe throw a Thursday yeah. or two in there. Yeah. As it gets closer to town meeting, there's likely to be scheduling with the select board. Right, right. Yeah. So you'll want to be meeting with them. Yeah. So you'll be back to Wednesday. That'll be at that a Wednesday. Point. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So agreeable. Well, the only bit. the only other thing I could say is that so far this looks like it would work, but um, Dylan might have a problem with the tenth, and that's kind of a shame that you wouldn't be able to see all the public safety. If that's something. Yeah. So you know you have a problem with the tenth. It's my birthday and I have a oh. <laughs> family uh, dinner up in New Hampshire. Oh. You want to change that one? No, miss you. Yeah. Well, that's kind of funny. Just tell my mom to move it to the 11th. Oh, right. <laughs> uh, well, I, I'm okay with missing the 10th, too, because that's my birthday, too. No way. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Definitely change it. Right, so <laughs> Want to just do a Thursday? <laughs> okay, so the 10th yeah. is Will you be back on the 12th? Or? Oh, yeah, yeah. I can do the 12th that week. Sorry, which month is, month is this? March. This is March. March. March so March 12th instead. Uh, yeah, Thursdays are pre-opening. So that one we just make March 12th. Okay. Right. Okay. That works. All right. Super funny. Okay. Um, I was not taking notes on uh, while I was trying to manipulate this thing. Sure. On which ones we're meeting with. I got a couple of them. In. Are you, are you um, going to send out a memo? Sure. Yeah, thanks. Not to create more work for you. Yeah, no worries. All right, so we have a warrant. Okay. Oh, joy open. All right, we have another week to go before the warrant closes, so there may be some articles that uh, come right in. Um, but I think we have enough of a document here that we can start to at least going through it and seeing what the major moving pieces are going to be. Um, the first six articles are consent agenda articles. These are routine matters that don't require debate, and we tend to vote them as one one unit at the beginning of the of the warrant at the end, at the end of the time meeting. So the first real debate happens on Article Seven. Um, if anybody says that this should not be on the consent agenda, one person says, well, no, we really want to talk about this. Um, it comes off the consent agenda, and we treat it like any other article. But this is a time saver. It respects people's time. Um, the first article is grants and gifts. If this is an annual vote that we have to take in order to um, receive and expend grants and gifts so we don't have to call us a town meeting every time we get a $200 grant. Okay, so no brainer there. Uh, chapter 90, when you think, when you see chapter 90, you think roads, bridges, culverts. So we got money from the state, $397,000 annually to keep our roads in good nick. Uh, this is based upon a $200 million bond. Uh, it's about a third of what we need. But uh, this allows us to receive and expend Chapter 90 money so we can repair the roads. Number three, short-term borrowing. Um, this is for the purposes of cash flow within the fiscal year, should we ever get into a situation where we need to pay bills, but the revenue has not been coming in. This gives the treasurer the ability to borrow on a short-term basis uh, in anticipation of future revenues within that fiscal year coming in. We've never had to use this, but we've come close a couple of times. So a couple of projects with big bills coming in that we weren't having. So it's not a revenue issue, it's more of an expenditure outlay. Yeah, yeah. 
timing mm -hmm. just being off from yeah. quarterly payments or whatever. Mm -hmm. okay. Article 4 is fund balance transfers. And uh, what this is is old projects where there's little piles of money left over. We sweep them up. This is a recurring article. We sweep them up and take that unproductive money and put it to use elsewhere in the, in the budget. Now I've uh, given the department heads warning that there's far too much money that's been appropriated and not expended on projects and that I want to see them spend this money down or else I will take it away from them or I will recommend that the town meeting take it away from them. We have about $160,000 of money lying around waiting to be used. So I've told the department heads, use it or else they're going to lose it. So there may be some gnashing of teeth about this one, but it's far too much money to be stranded in projects that people said we really need to have happen, and they didn't happen for whatever reason. So. I see you have a lot crossed off. Is that because you've already dealt with it? Oh, uh, I've got a lot crossed off because people said, no, please don't take that money away, but you know, <laughs> then I haven't seen any requests for procurement or for billing wages or people measuring my office for uh, keypads and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So. I feel you definitely, um, the, the CPA uh, money for the Hopkins playing field, that one you're probably going to need to keep, but the Hopkins playing field, uh, Hopkins will have to go through CPA and just ask for the extension. Yeah. They're, they're going out to bid, actually. That's what I yeah, heard. Shortly, yeah. yeah or, or, right or now. Right? So they're, so they're going to get the, I'm yeah. sure they'll keep it, but. Do they know that? I told, I mentioned it to Eric. Really? I did mention it to um, who, Eric, who is um, the athletic director for Hopkins. All right. But. Well. I'll talk to, I'll talk to Anne. I'll meet you with Anne tomorrow. So. Yeah, that would be best because you know who actually did the presentation. Eric was there, but he wasn't, it was the school committee, I think, and I forget who it was, but someone from the school committee was really yeah. the one in charge of... Paul? Yes. Pfeiffer. There you go. Yeah. Yes. He was the one that actually did the presentation. His I think his name went on it for school committee. Just to cover the base, I had composed an email to uh, Andy Morris Freeman some months ago uh, saying that uh, we're going to be submitting this as an article for consideration. <coughs> I think in terms of giving CPA notice, I think we've done that, but a formal presentation is not a bad idea. Yeah. Oh, for uh, to keep the money, you're saying? To extend the deadline for two years. Well, don't we have to have a vote because it's in writing? Doesn't it have to go on the warrant? It's, it was. It's on the warrant. It's coming up. Oh, it's going to be. That's what you put it uh, a placeholder yes. later on. Yes. It's not. So, it's not this what you have listed here. Right, You're not right, talking right. about this, right? All right. The Lake Warner um, water that, they, too. That just got spent out this week. Oh, okay, because I was thinking they're still doing I thought that was a good project. Right, right. The yeah. bills came in, um, they've spent that, and then, and, and then and more, so yeah. they'll pay for that. Okay. So that's that's number five, the CPA extension to the deadline. That extends the deadline for a further two years for the Hopkins Academy. Oh, CPA extensions. Yeah. See it. Yeah. Okay. Number six yeah. is our water filtration stabilization fund. It's twenty-six thousand dollars from water reserves to a special stabilization fund. We have a water treatment plant down by Bay Road. Uh, it is an ultra filtration plant. Uh, it filters water down to the virus level. Um, there are twenty-six um, membranes that uh, the water passes through. They have a 10-year life uh, span, and they are expected to cost about uh, $10,000 each to replace. Total cost of $260,000. So we put away, ten for a 10-year period, we put away $26,000 annually for that planned cost. And this is the fourth year. We've already done one 
ten year cycle. This is our fourth year in the second ten year cycle. And you replace them all in one year? Yep. Does that uh, price stay constant as the no, decades we've, pass? We've been, we've been bringing it up. It used to be $10,000 a year, uh, but, hmm. you know, things get expensive. And Could we purchase them in advance? Like, purchase one a year? Actually purchase it instead of keeping, in case the price rises? Or would they just get old and it probably gets yeah, stiff or whatever? Or might not. I, yeah. Yeah, it's a good question. I don't know enough yeah. about butter filtration. Depends on the type of membrane. Mm -hmm. Well, if we buy them in advance, they, whatever holds them will be obsolete anyway, so if you're stuck with something, it doesn't fit something. Yeah. Article 7 is the CPA administrative yeah. article. This article does two things. It dedicates a certain portion of the CPA money to three purposes, open space, housing, affordable housing, and historic preservation. And this is a requirement by state law. Uh, in addition, CPA committee uh, occasionally gets uh, an invoice or two, and so they set aside some money for their administrative costs. This is cost of publication, legal opinions, things like that. Um, typically, this is around two to five thousand dollars. That goes back to the town. Essentially, you're, we're charging the CPA for expenses, or goes, yeah, it goes back to the CPA. So. CPA takes out a certain amount. If they use it, that, that's good. If not, it goes back to the CPA. All right. Um, that's a consent agenda. We can get that all done in one vote. Uh, number eight. This is the general fund budget. This is the majority of our work we're going to engage in for this uh, spring. Number nine is the Enterprise Fund Project, Sewer, Water, and the Media. Three of them. Number ten, the assessors have asked for $75,000 for legal costs associated with the tax appellate board. Um, I don't know quite what to think about this article at this time. Um, so I'll be asking the assessors to clarify uh, what this would be. Why this is necessary. Number 11 is a housekeeping article for the Council on Aging. They have a van. Uh, they um, would like to use fair money uh, for upkeep and maintenance on the van. And so this would allow them to do that, uh, that work with a revolving fund without going back to town meeting every time. Number 12, transfers to stabilization funds. This is a work in progress. And where are we? Article 12. Article 12, it's on page 13. Oh, yes, page 13. Yes. Okay. So there's a bunch of transfers uh, that I'm proposing here. And this is worth spending some time on, maybe not tonight because I don't have all the information. Uh, when we went into the uh, November 7th uh, special town meeting, we did not have certified free cash. So we had to borrow from a number of stabilization funds in order to make the budget work. Uh, we promised town meeting at that time to replenish those funds. So that's one of the tasks that this Article 12 accomplishes. We replenish sewer impact fees for the money that we needed to balance the budget. There's a couple of other uh, transfers that we have to, to make. We took out a stabilization. I'd like to put that money back. Um, I would also like to take the free cash that's certified and, re and build up the capital stabilization fund. I think this is a priority of the town based upon our experience of the most recent election, ballot election, where we lost all six capital um, projects. So coming up with a different way of funding it, I think, is in our best interest. Um, Middle of the page, 
page seventy-five thousand dollars for the pension unfunded liabilities stabilization fund is something new and different. We have a pension through the county. Uh, that pension has a unfunded liability um, in the amount of let's call it two hundred million dollars. Our portion of that is five and a quarter percent, which is about ten million dollars. So, um, by law, the, the, the pension system has to pay down this, uh, this unfunded liability they have us on a 13-year pay-down amortization schedule. Um, but I would like to set some money aside for further payments to pay this down a little bit uh, faster. So, I've chosen the figure of $75,000, which is a figure that you and I worked on with the Enterprise Fund administrative charges. And um, you're talking about we would keep that here, that not that we would send it over to pay down our liability, yeah. but that we would hold that for such time as we're in a position to pay it. So right. So okay. we can use this to smooth out spikes in our pension assessment, as well as building up a kitty so that uh, we, can, uh, we can pay off our pension obligations sooner. This is a, something that came to uh, uh, our attention with the, the Mass Municipal Association meeting. It was uh, they had a workshop on it, uh, so other towns are looking into it. Uh, so um, this is again something new and different. We can talk about the merits of this and the affordability of it. Uh, please detail revolving fund. Uh, so. For road construction projects, um, uh, vendors hire or state hires police officers to do traffic uh, details uh, for utility work, for road construction, mm -hmm. so forth. Um, we send them a bill and then the Friday bar they send us money which we give to the police officers who work. All right, That process can be very slow. So getting police officers to work, giving them some incentive to work, means that we have set up a revolving account so that we have about, I think it's $21,000 in there, or maybe I'm thinking of a little bit. more than that. We did just add to it, and I honestly yeah, can't remember. I think remember we're up to $40,000. So when you say slow, the problem is collecting from? Yeah. Yes. Huh. Rather than, well, it's not necessarily a slow coll collection. It's just slower than the officers would want to be paid, so it might they might pay within 30 days, oh. but then you're then you're asking the officers to wait 30 days to be paid. Gotcha. And it, and it creates weird situations where one officer works for I'm just going to use the word Verizon, even though I don't know if they're good or bad at payment, and Verizon pays immediately, and another officer <coughs> um, the same day works for. Uh, construction company and they take their sweet time. So one officer is getting paid and the other one is not. Right. It creates all sorts of problems. So we we uh, have this fund. It's working really well now, but we have some big projects coming up, the Route 9 widening. So I'm thinking we should <coughs> increase the Route <coughs> 1 kitty so that we can smooth out the, the strain that we know is coming in a couple of years' time. Um, this may be subject we may want to bargain with the unions about, so this may not be the time for this. So it's there just for the And we have no ability to speed up the payment process yeah. with big major projects to require them to put some money up up front for towards. Uh, we, can't, <coughs> we can't do that, but we can withhold services for the, the next job. So, you know, if you don't pay us today, we won't work for you tomorrow. So there are a number of incentives that we have okay. yeah, 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 yeah. right. just curious. Who manages the um that? Like, <coughs> is, that done, is that done through here? Um you Linda or as is far it as uh, sending out the invoices, that's done uh, by the police department. Yeah, I just I'm thinking and they, they track it and then actually uh, Joan reconciles uh because she does the payroll, she reconciles <coughs> with Excuse me. Um, Lauren over at police department so that they know how much is outstanding and who's paid and, and what's getting credited and which officer oh. is next in line to be paid. Okay. 
I was just, you know, worried about, oh, well, we, the, the people got paid, so when you send out the bill and you didn't get, it didn't come in, no one's really caring or noticing, or I don't want it to no. keep, you know, spending this money and not being on top of our collection. And, and we're really aware of that, too. Oh, good. Um, but, so uh, uh -huh. it's something that we will need to keep working on. We've talked with uh, Mitch Cook, who is the officer in charge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and we, that that's important, too, because... If, if we're just going to spend down to the bottom, we're going to be in exactly the same position. So we knew, we need the invoices <coughs> to be going out. We need the payments to be coming in. We need that to be tracked. Mm -hmm. so. so this is a one-time payment. We won't have to pay into this year after year after year. Okay. I just heard something to Oh, it doesn't go into free cash every year? It doesn't, um, doesn't get swept out? Yeah, so we, we charge an administrative charge of 10% for each <coughs> job, unless it's a state job, in which case that's another kettle of fish and we also charge <coughs> the cruisers. All of that money comes into the general revenue mm -hmm. and it gets converted into free cash eventually. So okay. uh, water reserves twenty five thousand dollars. We encountered some uh, issues over at the library project <coughs> required us to spend out of our operational budget for this year and I said that we would try to replenish that operational budget uh, with a transfer so that's what we're trying to do. <coughs> article 13 is the capital article. Public safety complex emergency generator. Adley Media is looking for some equipment. School bus who may or may not be I talked to superintendent she may or may not want to Go for it now. School Department IT, um, the Jaws of Life equipment, with the mower and the drum roller for the DPW. Uh, DEP has required us to put fences around our water tanks, $25,000 each, two of them. Board of Health is asking for $5,000 for IT. Uh, Agricultural Commission is looking for right to farm signs, and I don't have a price yet. And then I really want to get us into electronic permitting uh, for the building inspector's office, and that's going to be a $32,000. Can the right to farm come out of this, the uh, CPA? They've said no. Really? Yes. Okay. It, it was odd, because I remember that, I, I don't know if it was this sign or another sign, that someone requested <coughs> signs and it was historic compliance, so it sounded like a good thing. And so pretty much all the requests that Andy gets, he just he just sends all the requests to this gentleman, Stuart, who is out, out in Boston, who is his rep or whatever oh. in Boston. That's what Boston said now. And so it comes back and he gets an email and is, it ends up saying no, but it didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Why? Yeah. We should redesign it, make it more about preserving our agricultural community and just throw all the rules on it. That's right. kind of like this is our credo. You have to well, not even just this sign. Yeah. There was historic signs. I mean, they well, were talking about some historic signs yeah. and talking yeah. about the history, and they wouldn't let them do signs. I don't hmm. know. Okay. I don't know. Just curious. All right, Article 14, Amy, this is going to be near and dear to her for changing the actual election. Yeah. <laughs> so we need to address this with some sort of a, uh, some finesse. We have an act of special legislation which is going to take effect on next April, not this one, but next, uh, having to do with the collector's office. So uh, we need to work our way around that one a little bit. So there's a lot of finesse that needs to go into this article, but take a look at it. I just wrote some conceptual language um, and let me know what you think. Is that why you put it to 22 though? Yeah. So, okay, so. Yep. <coughs> article 15 these and uh, 16 these are reserved for the CPA. <coughs> I know it's 16 that they want to raise additional money uh, for pres preserving two uh, uh, 1740 era maps of the town of Hadley. 
These are written on um, deer skin, uh, and they show pits of Hadley before Hadley broke up into five different communities. Um, so the malls aren't on there. Hmm? The malls aren't on there. <laughs> the malls are not on there. But, uh, there you have it. Sorry, Article 17 is the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Mm -hmm. Article 18, zoning by, by law definition, zoning. Uh, Article 19, uh, Megan's Way. I misspelled Megan. <coughs> There's nothing really all that juicy that someone said you're going to have a, a big crowd that they're going to make. See, David will put towards the end of the meeting, he'll have something really, really juicy he's so that everybody short, makes them stay. He's, he's getting a short term attitude. <laughs> And it, and it was interesting because the one time, oh, it was the last meeting, and right after, what was everyone talked about whether or not the they were going to property, the Dion property, whether it was yeah. going to be changed or not. Oh yeah. The entire group, everybody just got yeah. up to leave, and we're like, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, you'd put the tiny house as the last one. I mean. Right. Always something good. Maybe I should put it put in the municipal airport. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. In the swimming hole. Yeah. <laughs> Just throw in affordable housing <laughs> on the middle for everybody. Right. Else. So so does, there may be a stray article that comes in or not, but I think it's pretty good right now. Yeah. Okay. And, and can I just ask one question? Yeah. Uh, when we're going through the article four. So the main, the biggest items on here were things like um, public safety radio equipment and stuff like that. So they they just never bought the stuff, like the police vehicles or the dump truck here. Some of it's the balance. Like if you look at the first, they they bought it and then there's money left over in it. Yeah. So it's it's really. So it's just the difference between these two. Yes. Fine. Okay. Yeah, so yes. Yes. In in many cases that's what it is, and others it's a different story. Yeah, so if it was paid for by cash, there's a balance that needs to be returned. So the first one is mm -hmm. the dump truck, and there's seventy-five dollars and two cent lying around. Yeah, the I saw there was a six cent one, which I thought we should get right away. <laughs> yeah, With that nickel bag. Yeah. But if you move over to page six, these are ones that are done with borrowing. Yes. That's and right. we did we borrowed the full amount, so the dump truck for eighty five thousand dollars, but we did not spend so on our chart of accounts we still have the difference okay. which we have to report to SEC and revenue. Clean, cleaning, cleaning up our chart of accounts. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> yeah, so voting booths, twenty five cents. <laughs> Yeah, she was pretty close, huh? She's got to get up. She did, she did a good job of spending that money, but... Yeah, <laughs> that was really close. <laughs> yeah. So, with this money, though, too, Linda, this helps, I mean, all the money that you're... that you didn't spend is more money that, it, when capital comes around, will have more available to borrow yeah. again. Right, a, a, a little bit. Uh, it's not going to happen so much. The reason we had that, you see this is uh, related to borrowing that we did in, in last year. These are items that have not, uh, we were doing the ban for these kinds of uh, uh, capital expenditures in March. And the items hadn't been bought yet, but they were going to be bought by the end of the year. Um, going back this year, because again, the timing of the bans and the bonds, we're trying to get our timing uh, what's convenient for us is we're going to do the borrowing from now on, go back to what it had been a couple of years ago, which is we're borrowing for all of these items in June, right towards the end of the year. And if you haven't ordered your, your department's vehicle by then, please wait till July. So, we're, so we will then only be borrowing exactly what we spent. And we won't be having returns, and so it actually will be much better. So if there's authorization for eighty-five thousand, and they buy the truck for eighty-two, I'm I'm only going to borrow eighty-two, and I don't think we have to go do any change to the vote um, to get it back to. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, we change the vote anyways. We yeah. change the vote anyways. We change it. Okay. All right. So. 
Yeah, but we wouldn't. But I wouldn't have borrowed. In this case, I've actually borrowed the full eighty-five. But in those cases, I wouldn't have borrowed the full amount. So yeah. it's a little, little few, a few hoover, a fewer hoops to jump through. But so. All right. But but yes, if we have left, to, yes, the less we borrow, the more we can. <laughs> I borrow. Some borrow more. again. <laughs> so we've hit you with a lot of information. Um, I'm happy to talk now or later. To answer any questions. Uh, actually, my questions are mostly answered. I think I just need to go home and absorb it all. Yeah. No, well, maybe call you. Mm -hmm. Although my last meeting with him was, I said I was going to do it, and he said I'm looking so forward to working with you. And then the next day, my newspaper comes and he says he's leaving. So <laughs> I wasn't sure, quite sure how to take that. <laughs> and uh, I passed the conflict of interest law test. So. That was good. good. You got and you printed it in color. That looks really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You turned one in already. Yeah. yeah. When is the CPA meeting? Is that what? Because I think it was changed once. Coming yeah. up on it's the tenth. Two tenth. Well, there's one prior. Two prior. I see. It's the tenth Monday. We're going to have mm -hmm. David Eisenthal come and uh, speak oh. to you all. Oh. Uh, best way to manage money. Oh, that's right. So, are, are you meeting before then? Yes. Our, oh, okay. We are having a meeting. Mm. <coughs> but, oh, the 10th of February. Yeah. Right. So, oh, sorry. Yeah. The 10th of February. Okay. All right. Okay. So that's your next meeting. It is. Okay. That's the Monday. meeting for CPA that they said um, is for um, not, not talking about the new projects, but talking about CPA. Yeah. And so that's use that the, use the use of funds. funds. Yeah. Okay. That's on Monday. Monday, the tenth of February, yeah. seven p.m. over at Golden Court. Yeah. And we'll have our chief financial advisor there to talk about how to leverage CPA money for uh, maximum right. value. So there was and a that's seven. something the rest of the finance committee is interested in too. Yeah. Yeah. So CPA will be meeting with the the tenth. February 24th, I have, and then February 24th and March 9th. Those are our three meetings set before yep. the okay. um, annual town meeting. All right, and I'm giving my budget presentation on the 19th at 6.30. The 19th? Yeah. When, so, your budget presentation to who? <coughs> uh, to the, to the, to the board? To, to the to select us? board and to you. Oh, on the 19th. So that's when we we'll get our books. Yep. That's when you get your books. <laughs> so. David provides us with books. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> so wait a minute. We have a meeting on the twenty fourth of February, also. Well, yeah, this is CPA. CPA. These those meetings that I was just telling you about. If you'd like to go, you, that's not something that that's everybody a, from finance. No. But, oh, okay. It's just CPA <laughs> meeting, but you're more than welcome to come and listen. But the one on the tenth will be very interesting with uh, David Eisenthal, our financial right. advisor. So that one I've got in here, but the other ones are the other ones, optional. Yeah, yeah. Okay. and that's yeah. just optional. But it's over at Golden Court, so you're you know welcome to. And so it's. Is there a rec room there or something? Or yeah. yeah. So okay. when you pull in, there's a little uh, room. Um, you can it, 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 you can just walk right in, and it's just a okay. game room or something. Looks <laughs> like. So the nineteenth, I'll be presenting my budget, and I'll talk about. The Priorities of the select. Nineteenth of February. February. Yeah. And that's that's here. That's here. And it'll be a balanced budget. <laughs> At six thirty. You, may, we'll not like, you may not like how I balanced it, but <laughs> balanced. So the nineteenth, are we gonna? Is that gonna? Should we just say that's a tri board meeting then? I think that's the best way to do it. Yeah. Okay, so we should all schedule February nineteenth. As a tri board meeting. 6.30. So I actually had a question based on something that you had mentioned, yeah, Amy. Yeah, yeah. Um, that you had said, let's, um, well, I've done my budget for the um, debt and interest. Yeah. And you had mentioned for borrowing that you're interested in increasing the borrowing mm -hmm. within the levy and um, as a means of planning, better planning our future capital. Mm -hmm. um, that's a tool. Another tool is putting this into the capital stabilization account as, mm -hmm. um, as David has suggested here. Um, is that something that you want me to put into it at this point? I have done the budget based on 
um, the, the same practice as in the past. But if you're talking about an increase in order to cover, uh, for us to cover more of that expense and, uh, and allow uh, more room for additional items to be borrowed within the levy, um, is that 50000 more, 100000 Do you have a, an idea of, of what... Um, yeah, I was thinking up there. And, and, yeah, I, and, I was too, because 50 doesn't get you much. No. So if we're going to make an impact on the capital, do we want 100,000? Now, <coughs> do, any, do I, this, and and just do I be, need to explain? Do you want to explain? Uh, yeah, you want to explain? Yeah. Okay, all right. So when we borrow and um, and you go, to the, uh, you go to special election and cast a ballot um, on the debt exclusion items, so there's, uh, there's two ways that we can borrow. There's a number of ways, but there's two primary ways that we borrow at town meeting. And one is we're going to borrow subject to an o uh, passing the o an override. And so you decide, the town decides uh, actually at the election when they <coughs> go and uh, cast a ballot, that's when the real decision is, are we going to really be doing that borrowing? Because the impact of the debt exclusion borrowing is that amount is going to be added to your taxes. It's not part of what we budgeted uh, within current receipts. Now, when we do uh, borrowing within the levy, the le that means whatever our uh, money is available for the budget, this is another budget item that we're going to, just uh, as if I we were going to increase another budget by $50,000, I'm going to just increase the um, the borrowing within the the payments within the levy by fifty thousand dollars, and we could then have more votes at town meeting that don't <coughs> depend on a, a debt exclusion. We did have a number of votes at that last meeting where we went ahead and bought um, uh, a police cruiser, um, some town hall renovations. Um, usually, we try and keep that smaller items. We can get more of them. So twenty, thirty thousand dollars. People don't want to go and vote on borrowing $20,000 and having them out added to their, um, to their taxes. We usually try and gear that towards larger items, but, you know, such as, and I'm not, and I'm, I don't know how we would handle it, but such as a school bus for $120,000, so we would raise that money. The, because the amount we're paying um, off within the levy is just a few hundred thousand dollars, so we can't buy large items. Um, so if we increase that amount, if we increase, increase it, um, and understand that means it's taking up uh, other spaces in the budget. We're increasing the budget and not raising taxes to pay back borrowing. Now the reason we would borrow, I mean the, the advantage of a borrowing over, let's just buy it out of capital stabilization, is we could, can keep that payment even and we can borrow more or less in a year. Um, I'm, than is actually in the budgeted amount, and we use the budget for the payments down. So let's say we're buying within the levy something for $100,000. If you're going to pay that out of capital stabilization, you take $100,000 out of capital stabilization and, and, and pay for that item. If we're doing it as, we can, uh, as a borrowing within the levy, I'd borrow that money. Um, I'd borrow $100,000, and maybe we'd be paying twenty dollars a year for the five years plus, plus the interest. Um, and or maybe I'd be paying 40 this year and then 20 and then the <coughs> balance of it the following year. There's some flexibility in there as long as we're paying the same amount each year. It doesn't matter quite where it's going to. And we've been able to really save um, quite a bit in interest by paying for things um, that way with short-term borrowing and not have, it, um, not have them accumulate and go into the, into the bonds, which are... are Big ticket items. We're we're trying so that we get we save going to out for a bond for the buildings and very large items, and that we're going to try and pay with short term borrowing, um, and as much as possible within the levy. So it just it just it gives us some flexibility. We can pay things down faster, and we can borrow, and we and we can we can allow for more items that way. So yeah, fifty, fifty or hundred thousand dollars. I could put it, and you can cut it back later. But I wanted, I didn't want it to be a My sort of a shock as you're looking at it. Is but, the uh, the more you can do, the better, because I read if we, I know we're going to be putting some, and you're thinking about putting it into the capital stabilization. Mm -hmm. If we can do some of that, that too is great. Right. But we don't just because it's in capital stabilization doesn't mean we have to spend it. 
That's right. Right? So we could keep it there so when things like you want a bigger project, you have some savings, you have something there. So you want to paint town hall. It's there, you know, because there's some of these projects are 100,000, 200,000. And, and we need to save for those bigger projects. Now, I don't think, I think the town made it very clear that they don't want those 100,000, 200, they don't want those school buses or anything else to go through their taxes and have overruns. Not at this point. So, you know, if we're going to go back to a, a debt exclusion, I think the only way the town would be wanting to see another debt exclusion is if we're looking at, another, you know, maybe DPW for a building. There's no way we can get that building in the budget. So that's something we might have to go to debt exclusion, for, yep. right? But as far as all these other items, and the other thing is when you talk to the departments, I think, and, and then they come to us, they come to um, us or they're coming to capital. I think what we you need to tell them is when they come, you need to explain, is this a want or is this a need? You know, is, is it, do we, do we want it or do we, do we have to have it? And if we want it, great, we might want it. And it, what is your plan B if you don't get it? And my plan B is I'd have to, you know, I, if I don't get this truck, we're going to have to then hire out. Okay, you have to hire out. How much is that going to be? And maybe is it going to be, maybe we do want it because it's going to cost us so much more to hire out. You know, so, but we might have to hire out for a period of time until we could save for something like that. So we would want to put it on the right. radar. Yeah. But and when we put it in capital stabilization, the uh, it earns interest and stays in the account. So yeah. the uh, interest yeah. on that uh, increases the stabilization account. Well, just as it does our other stabilization, we have other accounts that there is, true is for the capital. What we saw that came through capital, what the town meeting saw, was a very small amount because mm -hmm. the requests that went to the capital um, committee was huge. It was like four times the amount. I mean, there was there was a lot. And we said, okay, we're going to push this off. We're going to push this off. We're, we'll look at it this later. We don't think we can do this right now. So the ones that we did were a small amount. And, and only a part of those got done. And not, I mean, is because we paid for them out of the levy or capital, capital stabilization. But all the ones we couldn't pay for got rejected. So not only the ones that we said to capital... We said, oh, we'll do those later. We'll look at those later. We got all the ones that we said we'd do now that we couldn't do that are right, now exactly later. So my feeling is is there is a ton of stuff that we're going to be, that these departments are going to be asking for. And we need to figure out a way to, mm -hmm. if they're really that necessary, how to pay for it. Because mm -hmm. it's going right. to be a lot. And I, I think we're going to need a, a number of different <coughs> ideas. Too. Yeah, going to do some some of a different. But I think those are two good items. It is. I actually ran through and thought, well, if I had an extra hundred thousand, um, I what we already have outstanding, I can take care of in two years instead of three or four years. I, it really does make a difference, which allows room for um, for borrowing on new items, borrowing for new items. So I think it's uh, it does make a difference. Um, I just sort of wanted some uh, clearance from you as to how should I put in. I could put yeah. in for a hundred and that's something that you know when you're looking to make some cuts. I mean that's, yeah. that's an area you, that you know isn't, isn't yeah. necessary. Because right. every dollar you put in is a dollar we don't have for the rest of the budget. Sure. Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. But we do have some new growth, right? We have a decent new growth coming in. Well, it just feels that way. Yeah. <laughs> sure it does. It's our own growth. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we, we, last year we brought in just shy of three hundred thousand dollars for new growth. It looks like it's going to be a little less than half that this year, based upon the current activity. And how about the marijuana place? Marijuana got fifty thousand dollars coming in for that. Is that just from what they give us, or is that from sales? That's, that's just from, from what they give us. We get 3% of the sales. Okay. But we had all that growth last year. Doesn't that continue? I mean, it's a yearly levy. Right, so it's built into the levy. Uh, so the new oh. growth 
the calculation of each levy is last year's levy plus two and a half plus new growth that goes into the next year's base levy plus two and a half mm -hmm. plus new growth plus the the uh, the debt exclusions. Mm -hmm. But so, that's still so that's so, so that's three hundred thousand dollars we get again. Right. This yes, year. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We've raised mm -hmm. our baseline. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. if it's not so ongoing expenses, we have yeah. additional yeah. money to spend on capital yeah. or other. So I mean, it, it's pretty rosy. I mean, really, we kind of have all the commerce for Amherst and Northampton. <laughs> not all of it, especially Northampton, but quite a we big chunk well. of it. Oh, quite a bit. Of, quite a big chunk. Of, there are new businesses coming in all the time. Yeah. We have about half the hotel rooms in the county are in our town. 613 rooms. Each room brings in about $1,600 of uh, revenue <coughs> per annum. So that's a very nice to us? To mm -hmm. us. Wow. Yeah, we should get a conference and get some more hotels. It's been, it's been going up. Yeah. Our, rest, our restaurants are pushing about three and a half million dollars worth of product every month. Um, we get a we get a cut of that, three quarters of one percent. So there's a lot of prosperity going on. Yeah. Um, speaking of revenues, would, do you think we could? Have, we didn't really work that in on the calendar, going over the revenues that would be available for the budget. Should we put that in about uh, for that first meeting where we're doing the yeah, warrant? Yeah, the first meeting when we're doing so the warrant. warrant. We'll go over the revenues. revenues. Let's go over the revenues. Yeah. I, I finished those. Up. No, I didn't finish them up. We're still working on the administrative charges. Yeah, and can we go over those too? Because I, and I know you're working on them, right. but this yes. group is going to be, I know I'm getting hit with it all the time. The people, they're asking. Yeah. We're, so I, I, I need to. On what? On the charge pay? Well, what? Yes. Is that we, what you meant? We, okay. Yes. Need, yeah. The administrative. Yeah. Charge facts. So we have to. I I I've reviewed the calculations. We need to show the rest of the team that how the calculations work, and we need to know where the numbers come from, mm -hmm. and feel pretty confident about yeah. those numbers. Mm -hmm. Linda and I yep. met for about an hour on that yep. very same thing today, and I know that she's working hard to improve the improve, <laughs> improve the presentation. It, yeah, it all it all worked up and added out uh, added up, but the um, the layout was uh, very confusing. So I'm actually working on. Uh, and, and it's 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 I'm mostly done with it, so we'll have that yeah. tomorrow. I knew you were looking at yeah. looking at getting a little bit more detail. Uh, you know, almost like weren't we talking mm -hmm. about is, you know, but this she, this would be more detailed. This is what you're really using. Um, versus actually, in some ways, less detail. Yeah, less detail. Yeah. Oh. We're trying to just streamline it. We're trying to get it. We're using data reports and, and getting the information right off of the reports. Uh, when I say s streamlining, that's um, we are coming. We came up with a percentage to add on to the salaries figure that we salary figures that we're using for benefits, rather than calculating benefits for all of the individuals named in each of the departments and DPW. That we have, let's use their salaries and let's add. Uh, okay, here's the total employee benefits we're paying for the town is this much, the total salaries is this much, it looks like about 25% of salaries goes into benefits. Can we agree that we're just going to, whatever the salaries are for these departments, that it's going to be 25% to allow for benefits? And when you've got small departments and, and people coming and going and taking benefits and not taking benefits and being single and then taking family, there's an awful lot of recalculation that goes into, all right, exactly how much is this costing? And then we have to send out a percentage to each of the enterprise funds. Whereas I, we think that if you just can ag and agree on a percentage to add on and have that be that, and, and just check it each year that that's a legitimate percentage mm -hmm. still based on the year before, that we can just go go forward. It's easier for um, to verify it, to justify it, and uh, saves a lot of that detail mm -hmm. work. So mm -hmm. at, at this point, the detail work is up front trying to, we're putting in a, uh, more time and effort trying to make it simpler, and that's just the way it is. Okay. It takes it takes more effort to make it easier. Yeah, what, what did it's, you say today? Well, I would have written yeah, a shorter if letter. If I had but, more time, I would have written a shorter letter. Yes, yeah. that was... Uh, but here's another that. one, like uh, an example that someone's used. Well, like, we want to talk about buildings, you know, mm -hmm. and 
well, maybe the DPW, you know, water or sewer uses so much space where Hadley Media might only use a very small square footage. So to take um, something in the use of building, our buildings and stuff, do we just, it might not be fair just to just say, let's split it across the board. Do you follow me? Yeah, so we're, 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 we're revised the buildings. We're, we're taking those kinds of uh, nuances into account. We're not Perfect. calculating things yeah. based upon square footage, but rather activities. So the collector's office, which formerly was 3% of water and sewer, when you look at the amount of activity that they have to invest in processing bills and payments on yeah. a quarterly basis, mm -hmm. It's not three percent by any stretch. No, of but water. But so the collector time That's an is being used a lot for water and sewer, mm -hmm. but the collector's time is not being used a lot for Hadley Media. Zero. Not at all. Right. right. So Zero. Hadley Media shouldn't have to pay for the collector's time. And, so that's and the good news yeah. is that they have never yeah. paid for the collector's time. Oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, we made those adjustments a long time ago. Okay, so those are the types of things, I you know, think, which yeah. we'll have a nice meeting, we'll go over, so that way, if we are questioned, we can answer this. <laughs> and, and, I, and I think, like we say, it takes more time to make it, uh, to make it simpler, and then we've gotten so caught up in Thank these you. other things, but um, I think it's, I think we've addressed it pretty well. We're really, I think we're both happy and agreed with the concept today, it's just, the, it just, the printout was just, I had to go back to the drawing board and yeah. make it not. <laughs> yeah, we were, we were immersed in the numbers so we could follow it, but we recognized that the average person would be... We like, want to make it something. Yeah, yes, yeah, I get it, I get it, I get it. Okay. If we're going to... If we're going to argue about something, I don't want it to be, but this figure and this figure don't add up to that. No, that's not the way. I don't want to argue about that kind of formula. I want it to be a really clear where we're getting the numbers for and, and then talk about whether that seems appropriate. So you're going to show us this on, uh, on the 11th? Will you have that something? Absolutely. Yeah. And charge back. Sure. Charge back. And I think it will go to problem. When is it? When you bring it to select board before that or after? Well, I want to get it to the financial management team. Okay. And yeah, I just um, okay. I just think the select board would want to see it before we bring it to finance or no? Uh, no finance management team first, and then yeah. the select board finance uh, committee. And that will all happen before the 11th? Yep. Okay. As long as I get this to you tomorrow. Yeah. 80%, David, 80%. You can, you can do it Friday <laughs> because I'm going to be all over the valley okay. tomorrow. It's almost done. Okay. It's just the write-up part. We, we're, we're set with the formulas. It's just writing mm -hmm. it up. Yeah, we found okay. a lovely unfunded liability we didn't know anything about, so we threw that in there, too. So oh. in the, in the, What's that? Category of be careful what you wish for. Oh, what is it? What is it? And the pension unfunded liability. Oh, that one, yeah. Oh, the one that you were just talking about. <coughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 10 million. Hmm? Yeah. Is it 10? Yeah, it was 10 million, wasn't it? Yeah, 10 million. Have we considered transponders over Route 9, you know, to pick up cars as they go through, like on the pike? Just a, oh, well, for a little added uh, revenue? Uh, little added a little, you know, the gantries with the... It's going to put a, put a liquor store in the middle of the Coolidge Bridge. Yeah. Did, did the pension uh, liabilities go down as people perish? Or? Well, we, should, <laughs> we, should, we should do that where you take well, out the insurance policies on all, yeah. the, on all the pensioners. Yeah. <laughs> Those particular pensions go down, but the big number doesn't know. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, so <laughs> that sounds bad, I yeah. know. The li liability is based, Are we on tape upon, <laughs> is based upon actuarial studies, and they make uh, assumptions about how right. long people live. And, uh, so people the, living longer. This goes back to when the county was running all that? Yeah. So all those commissioners and all just kind of yeah. pushed, pushed it down the road? Um. No, I think a lot of it had to do with the lack of uh, the return on invest, invested income, particularly during the uh, 2008 Great Recession. Ah, okay. uh, almost every single pension system lost money. Yeah. And Western Massachusetts did a lot better in terms of preserving their financial uh, well-being okay. than the eastern side of the state. So it's a shortfall due to... Yeah. yeah. There, w there was money going in, there's just never... 
yeah. Yeah. situation. Okay. Yeah, and like I said, we're on a 13-year uh, pay-down schedule. Some of these pension systems are in a 40-year pay-down schedule. So, okay. So we're we're doing okay. So this is so Hampshire County retirement. It, that's yes. what we're talking about. So, like a teacher that retires or any any um, employee, um, they start collecting from there. When and so this is money that we pay them. Is that how that works? Who pay? How do they get the they money to pay? By the retirement, by the county. Well, well, by the retirement system, and they bill us. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. okay. For, yeah. Or they, or they assess us. And they we assess make us. That. Yeah. Right. And is that in one of the? That's and it is and it is based on the prior year salaries. Joni's the expert on this one, yeah. but, but that's pretty much it. It's, but it's not based on, they don't count out up all of our people who got paid and bill us back for those. It's, yeah. it's more based on a percentage of percentage the of total prior, salaries. Of, of the salaries that we're paying. Oh. Um, Compared to everybody else who's right. also in the system, and that works out to about five and a quarter percent for us. Mm. Okay. okay. They found their own simpler formulas. Okay. All right, is anybody? Do we have anything else? Happy New Year, everybody. Motion to adjourn. Yes. All right, motion to adjourn then. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much for taking your time. Bye. Yeah. Second night. <laughs>